uh, 401, and I know it's the presence of a quorum just barely today, so I'll call this meeting of the Northampton Transportation Parking Commission for May 17th, 2016 uh, to order. I'll note the audio and video recording of the meeting, and let's begin as we always do with, the, with uh, introductions for the benefit of the public, starting with our Vice Chair. I'm Julie Sharon, the Ward for Counselor and the Vice Chair for this Commission. Jody Casper, Chief of Police. Uh, Nancy Forrestal, Assistant City Collector. Krista Burnett, Citizen. David Vallada, DPW Engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dave Palmer, Vice Director of Central Services. Terry Ushko, DPW. And I'm Ryan O'Donnell, I can say it already. Um, let's see, we begin with the period of public comment. It's an opportunity for the public to speak on any issue uh, they may wish. If there is an agenda item farther down that you want to talk about, you can wait until that time or you can comment both times. Um, so with that, is there anyone like to be a public comment? Yes. Good afternoon. This is Nancy Forrestal, Assistant City Collector. Um, I'm here to speak on the Give your name and address for the record. So we're going to have a timer. I'll try not to go Okay. Hi, I'm Dawn Lynch, and I live at 37 O'Connor Avenue in Holyoke. I do business here in Northampton at 376 East Hampton Road. I'm one of the operations managers for Mercedes Cab, and here in Northampton, as some of you know, we own Go Green and Funky Cab, and today I'm here to talk to you about the city's taxi regulations. Um, they're in desperate need of reform, basically. And uh, let's see here. Um, I have a few issues with the regulations. The primary issue is that the city currently does not allow for livery vehicles. Um, and this has to change. There's a few reasons for that. Right now, there are currently about 40 companies using livery plates in the area. But under the current rules, a company that is licensed to do business in Northampton is not allowed to use a livery vehicle. Um, and, you know, to be quite frank, that's just kind of silly and doesn't really make any sense. And it's really only going to serve to drive businesses like ours out of the city. Um, there's also a public safety issue. Livery cars allow for greater public safety. It's cheaper to have higher insurance coverage on a livery vehicle. So obviously for a small company, that's a huge thing for us. You know, my company right now in our high season has about 13 vehicles. So you could do the math on an insurance policy for a company of our size, let alone something larger. Um, there is also the issue of the fact that they're just very out of date. They haven't been updated since the late 90s. I see a few problems with this. Um, there's the issue that some of the requirements are not actually possible to follow. For example, you're only allowed to solicit business in a taxi stand, but there are no taxi stands. They're gone. They haven't been here for, I think, a couple of decades. Um, there's also regulations that directly contradict the actual rules that are in practice. Um, the regulations call for taxi meters, and they specify like maximum rates and all these other uh, things with the meters, but when you go to get your licenses, they tell you that you can't use meters and you have to use flat rates. So it's a little mind boggling. Um, and the rules as they are now are barely enforced, which is kind of the only way that any of the companies are sort of able to do business in the city at all. Um, because they're just, there's no way that you could abide by any of these rules. Um, the other major issue with them being out of date is a larger issue that I think a lot of municipalities don't really want to touch on, which is the Uber issue, but there's currently nothing in place that speaks to any ride-sharing service. So those are 100% unregulated and frankly putting, you know, the citizens in danger. Um, I know I'm out of time. I just wanted to provide you guys with, I brought the rules, the current rules printed out for you. And then I also have, um, I'll just get those to you see the guy in charge. Okay. There's also, to check this. this is sort of a history of the correspondence that our company has had with the city regarding this matter. 
we sent some letters and also complaints about Uber and didn't really get very far. I don't know if you guys remember from the city council meeting, they had said to sort of come here and talk to you guys, so that's why I'm here. But um, we'd like to be a part of it, my company, myself. We have a lot of knowledge to impart. My boss has worked with other municipalities, creating regulations and you know creating taxi stands, that kind of thing. So we have a lot to offer. We just need to know what's next, basically. Well, thank you very much. And because we didn't post this on the agenda in advance, we can't discuss it mm -hmm. because of the old meetings law. Okay. But I would be happy to add this to the uh, to a future agenda for discussion. Okay, great. Um, it seems like an issue of importance. To yeah, discuss. definitely. I'll be back at the next meeting, and uh, I'll probably. Okay, stand and I will follow up with you and, and distribute this information to the other members of the committee. Okay, perfect. And my contact information is on um, all of those letters as well. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Awesome. Mr. Thanks so much, you guys. Much. Is there any other public comment? Before we launch the agenda. Um, okay. So let's see. We're going to go right down to item nine, which are our discussion items. Um, item A is the Transportation and Parking Commission um, schedule of meetings. I put this on the agenda because in the past uh, we've had um, uh, discussion about what we do during the summer. We don't always meet every month during the summer. And I note that we just barely have a quorum here in May. So I would just put it to the commission and see if there are any preferences about meetings over the next three months. Any thoughts or just continue with monthly meetings? Council. Um, you know, I often commissions and committees maybe skip a month in the summer. I don't know how, I'm new here, so I don't know how you all feel about that, but would there be interest in maybe skipping July? No, that would be good for me because I won't be here. Okay. I don't think that week. No, I won't be here. Right. Is there anyone who knows they're going to be absent for any of I'll be gone in July, but I have a substitute. So. That's true. Yeah. You don't all have a substitute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's 69 other people. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if there's, if there's no objection, then perhaps we'll plan on the June meeting and then not having a meeting in July, unless something comes up of uh, importance that we have to address. Uh, but otherwise, I guess we could just, that'll be the, the informal plan. Okay, I don't see that we have to vote on that, but we wanna raise that since we're in the month of May. Um, moving on, um, this is a follow-up on installing tra a traffic counter. Actually, you know what, with, with your permission, I, I remember we have someone who has come to speak on a specific issue, so if you don't mind, um, I'd like to jump down to item J. This is uh, the discussion of a possible addition of a 15 minute space on Market Street near Bridge Street and Main Street. And you'll recall we just added a 15 minute space on King Street. Um, I think it came originally at the request of a of, of, of business there, but it actually helps multiple businesses and, and um, visitors to the city in that location. And I think this is the same thing for Market Street. So I put this on the agenda to discuss whether we might consider adding 15 minute spaces on Market Street. And the person who brought it up to me is, is here. Um, and you, if, you, if you would come up and uh, tell us what your, your thoughts are. Hey, thanks for having me. My name's Erica Zikas. I am the director of Click Workspace, or a co-working organization. Um, recently moved to nine and a half Market Street. We're happy to be there. And I'd just like to start my comment by thanking DPW, uh, Mayor Narkowitz, and Wayne Biden um, for helping us in advocating and installing a bike rack um, on Bridge Street, technically just under the bridge. It's a great help to us as there are very few bike racks down in that neck of the woods, and our sidewalks are too narrow um, in front of our building. Um, <clears throat> so we're interested in seeing a 15 minute parking space somewhere on Market Street. It would be a big help to click workspace as we occasionally, uh, routinely <laughs> receive uh, deliveries of office supplies and things. Um, another tenant on the third floor of our building is a rare books dealer and is lugging boxes of books up and down and struggling to find a spot. I've also uh, briefly connected, and although I hesitate to speak for them, have gotten approval of the general idea from Megan Sullivan um, at Joe's Cafe the roost, um, thinking that there are a number of customers uh, who come to do uh, pickup and takeout 
um, and would appreciate being able to quickly find a space um, in the neighborhood of uh, two hour meters for people who tend to stay. Great, thank you. Yep, that about, that about covers it. Um, and I mean, I generally like 15 minute spaces wherever they are. I think they create parking turnover and are generally good, but I would be grateful for any comments from the commission about this particular location. Just clarification, any existing 15 minute spaces either on Main Street around the trestle or as you head down Market Street? I'm just not that I don't clear on that area. No, no. not to my knowledge. No answers, okay. <clears throat> Thanks, perfectly good. Is there a certain stop? Um, Ms. Forrestal and then um, Is the concern more for delivery or for clients going in and out of the various businesses? From the perspective of um, my business, it's for deliveries. I think that would perhaps be different for other businesses on the street. The most, for example, running in for right. a quick 15 yeah, you know, 50 minutes to pick up coffee. Um, yeah, but for us, it's delivery. Mm -hmm. That's a sure. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that it's two different conversations in the sense of, of parking spaces. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to see which one is the, the one that's... The distinction was pointed out to me, the difference between a, a 15 minute spot, which doesn't regulate who's there in a dedicated delivery spot, and that's not what we're asking. It's not what we want. I think the quick turnaround for the UPS truck to pull in through the drop off. The streets are narrow, double parking is a real danger in that. Um, do you have a certain spot in mind? I mean, I'm pretty familiar with the spots that are along that stretch. Is there a certain one that you and Mr. Dennis? Uh, I, I, I don't personally have a favorite spot picked out. Um, I'm sensitive to the fact that it is a, a neighborhood of, of people and, you know, it's a mixed use. Um, so I, I'm happy to leave that to the consideration of the DPW and others. Are your deliveries like heavy items that you'd want to be like right in front of Cliff or does that not really? Well, they often come on a, a hand truck. Okay. So um, I don't think it's critical that it be directly in front of the building. Um, we do happen to be equidistant <laughs> between the Roost and, and Joe's. Um, but yeah, there, there's metered spots on the street. Can I just ask for more? Of course. Oh, actually, I guess this is maybe more for the 15-minute spots, I, I seem to think they're usually at like the end of a block, right? They're not usually mid-block. Am I right? No, there's some that are there are mid-block. Okay. It, it really, wherever it seems to work the best. When is the dry cleaner that was moved? Mm -hmm. When the dry cleaners itself moved? That's sort of in the middle. Well, there's there's something that isn't quite an alley that comes out here that would allow easy just to the far side of your building I think that would allow easy in and out because it wouldn't be in the middle of two parked cars there's an open space mm -hmm. and that's when you're thinking about the end of the block that's kind of what you're getting but there's a space there in the middle of the block on Market Street that I think would serve the same purpose Right, it's yeah. true, yeah, there's a um, parking lot behind our building that has mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. immediately to it Seems like we would want an end spot of delivery to going to be approaching you know, one of the major issues just so people can, big trucks are bigger, but also to get things out of the back and go around in that space would make the most sense. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have a turnover by definition. It's also safer that way because people won't be having to parallel park into right. that space. You have more people trying to use that space, so you have more people trying to parallel park and uh, the turnover rate. So if they can pull in directly, it's a little bit mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Okay. Any other comments in general? Um, I don't know if anyone wants to make a motion on this, but it, it would seem to make sense to come back to the next meeting with a specific proposal. And I'm happy to um, try to uh, work with the DPW and, and the businesses to come up with that space mm -hmm. and then we can vote on a specific space or consider a specific space. So. But it sounds like we're broadly, or some of us are, are supportive of the idea. I certainly am, so. Yeah, thank but, you for your consideration. Yeah, any other questions or comments for Ms. Ossie right now? Okay. Well, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, if you want to make a motion, you can, but otherwise I think I would just 
say we take it up at a future meeting. That's great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so number uh, item B is a follow-up on installing a traffic counter at Hampton Avenue for traffic and pedestrian counts for Hampton Court's mid-block crosswalk request. And I would defer to Councilor Shara on this one. Um, yes. So last August, I believe, I could pull up what the date of the meeting. Um, we had had a discussion about this, the idea of having a mid-block mid -block crosswalk there. And um, what, what uh, you had told us was that you need to have do the pedestrian counts and that kind of stuff, but that couldn't be done until the spring. So now that we're into the spring, um, I thought we'd check in and see when that, that counter could go up or what, what the plan is for taking those next steps. Right. Plan on putting out a counter and doing those pedestrian counts, yeah. but I don't have an exact date. I don't know if there's a kind of backlog. Oh, there is. Okay. Before traffic counter is for the coming Okay, so if they were to contact me about this, um, would you say in the next? Let's see, it's I'm, I'm going to interrupt yeah. here and uh, and plead short staffing. Um, I yeah. think people are aware that over the last number of months, the DPW is uh, um, experiencing the loss of the director and recently the loss of the city engineer. And this has put a lot of stress on the department in terms of demands for uh, projects that have specific time frames and have deadlines. And I, I uh, plead with people to provide some patience with us. I know generally the department is the one that you need to have patience with anyway, um, but I'm asking for a little bit more until we start to get our house a little bit more in order. So I certainly appreciate it. That is the message that I've been conveying when people have been talking to me about these things. So um, I, I very much understand that. But we have not forgotten about Hampton Avenue. We have gotten a number of, <laughs> of calls about the condition of the roadway as well. And it actually is one that uh, rises fairly uh, high up in what's called the benefit value of when we analyze, uh, uh, when our consultant analyzes road conditions. So we would like to take a roadway repair project in conjunction with possible crosswalk at that location and perhaps to a larger project that incorporated a crosswalk. Um, but looking towards next year at that uh, as a possible way. Okay. All right. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. I'll pass that on. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anything else on this item? Okay. Um, item C um, is perhaps similar. This is a follow-up. Painting over a parking spot on the South Street at Columbus that was removed by ordinance on November 5th, 2015. Again, count Yeah. <laughs> this is another one I'm getting almost weekly uh, emails asking about because the, the residents there feel like it's a, a pretty significant safety issue. Um, so I've, I've explained all the changes that have happened in the department. Um, but it's... Yeah, in November, but I can remind again. We'll, we'll follow up with um, operations and things to be able to take care of this. Okay. So we'll follow up with Rich and Great. get that. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Um, I, um, and I'm jumping all over the place. I forgot to do uh, number four, which is reports. Um, so, 4A. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is approval of minutes for March 15th, 2016 and April 19th, 2016. Um, is there, I don't know if I read those dates correctly, March 15th, 2016 and April 19th, 2016. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes as a group, both of them? Motion second. Uh, is there a second? Second, sir. Second. Is there a discussion or amendment on the minutes? I have one, I didn't catch it, so on the, um, the March 15th, 2016 minutes on the second page, <coughs> election of vice chair. Um, the second is counselor, was Councilor Shara. I went back and looked at the video. <laughs> <laughs> I it was your voice. I, I seconded my own. <laughs> you, no, this is just to open nomination oh, to okay. chair. <laughs> it's not that much of a power grab. Okay. Maybe I forced okay. it on you, actually. I don't think you wanted to be vice chair. But yeah, here you are. Um, <coughs> 
So yes, yeah, to the best of my understanding, I think that was you. Any other uh, additions or corrections? Okay, all in favor of approving both minutes? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Um, any updates from the Vice School Pedestrian Subcommittee? Well, we had a public meeting, but unfortunately, I was not able to attend it. There is, however, another public meeting coming up, and uh, I would encourage people to go to First Churches, and if they're interested, they can have this. Okay. And uh, the project uh, that sort of pushed it, pushing that along is, is moving along with the consultants. This is the third public meeting in yes. the consultants. Yeah. Uh, process and the date and time of, of that meeting? The date and time, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Actually, there's an open house from 5.30 to 6.30. There's going to be a lot of material which has been produced that will be available, and people are encouraged to come early and take a look at it so that they can have some sense of that material before their, the project itself goes on. And that means tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, 18th, yeah. Sneaks right up on you, doesn't it? <laughs> I actually was at was um, at some of the meeting last week, and it was very well attended, and people were really engaged in, you know, just planning out streetscapes. And so it was a great meeting. And there will be a um, project downtown in midsummer, uh, June twelfth, to try to show some of the things that might be done. Just one day. Yeah. It's mostly just it's a four hour project actually, so get there and don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Come into a town near you. <laughs> so I think the chief and, and Nancy Forrest are sort of aware of what's proposed down there. It's between Cracker Barrel Alley and Center Street. Be some alteration to the layout. Okay. Do we know which four hours? It's the morning, I believe. <clears throat> so I think it's uh, coterminous with the, or slightly coterminous in following the um, uh, the Saturday market. I mean, there's it's not conjunction, but it was done with the fact that people would be down there mm -hmm. at that time in mind. Yeah. Uh, any other discussion on this? <coughs> okay. Um, updates from the DPW. Installation of a, a dead end or no outlet sign at the entrance of Ice Pond Drive. This is my last one, I promise. Um, so, almost a year ago, it was June 16th, at, um, before I was on this commission, um, we discussed, uh, it was discussed at this meeting to add a no outlet or a, or a dead end sign at Ice Pond. And um, Ned had said at that meeting that. Um, that whichever sign was most appropriate would be installed, um, but has yet to be installed. So, okay. I'm in on that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on this item? Okay. Um, <laughs> item E is um, discussion of a possible change in parking rules, such as a 15-minute or temporary <coughs> delivery delivery area at 30 Belmont Avenue. If you remember, that, um, Mr. Uh, Rubin, Rick Rubin, came to the last meeting and. I think he often makes deliveries for the Smith College Dining Commons, and he gets, I think, his share of tickets at that location. And so his request is temporary parking there, and I would welcome comments from the commission. I, I drove down there, and Belmont is a very narrow street. It's one way, it's kind of a, a curve, and there's parking on one side, and there's no parking on the other side. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Rubin is parking on the no parking side, I think he might be. Um, 
in which case I don't know how we change that rule because people can pass on the street if, if we change that. Um, and there doesn't seem to be a time limit on the other side of the street. So, Ms. Forrest, I don't know if you in particular had. Right, there's no time limit. It's just an extremely congested area. Okay. So perhaps it's the case that deliveries can't find parking and they're trying to park on the other side and get to. Well, yeah, I don't know if any, anyone has any ideas, but it seems to me just to be kind of unavoidable. But. If there's parking on the other side, can't there be a parking place that's got 15 minutes on the other side? Yeah, potentially. Isn't that what he wanted? I'm not sure. I, I, <laughs> okay. assume, I assume so. <laughs> uh, or, I, you know, I assume so. This is the Smith parking? It's, yeah, it's in front of the Smith Dining Commons office. Or something. It's 30 Belmont. I mean, it might be that that's where students usually park and maybe okay. there would be a resistance to changing that to a temporary spot then. Well, uh, in years then? No. So people are probably parking there all day long and getting their time right. off for right. okay. so 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If I may, however, right there is a Smith College parking lot. Okay. Um, so they can park in that parking lot. So, and I know that that's where there are administrative offices in there for dining services. Mm -hmm. um, so, these are folks who are going in to do something in their office mm -hmm. and then coming back out, and you know they're they're running in running out as opposed to mm -hmm. like deliveries to a dining room. Sort of. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's been a long-standing problem in that area because it's just so. Might be helpful for the next meeting if we could get a somebody get a photograph, okay. so we could become familiar with it and also find out how frequently is he doing deliveries and what's he doing? Is he using a you know a box truck or is he using a minivan? Um, and are there a lot of others, or is he the only one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which seems unlikely. But who knows? Any other comments? I think those are good suggestions. So, all right, I'd be happy to try and get a picture and follow up with Mr. Rubin and we can make more progress on this next time. So, okay, thank you. Any other comments on this? Okay, uh, item F is a discussion of a possible addition of a parking spot in front of First Church's office entrance. Um, Council Chair, can you explain this? Yeah, so um, in the discussion about removing, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, may it please the commission. My name is Claire Overlander, and I'm representing First Churches here oh, okay. this afternoon. Please, so, I, well, I am not familiar with your process, so if it's after your conversation or in the midst of it, I'm well, happy. Well, we'd be grateful if you would, if you're familiar with the situation, if you could tell us about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, there are two issues, actually. And we're talking about the Center Street side entrance to the church, not the big front on Main Street. And you mentioned the crosswalk, right? Or did you mention the parking space? Which is which? Oh, at, at that location, the parking space, right? Parking space, okay. We'll do, I'll do that one first. Okay. Um, for many years, there has been a parking space uh, right adjacent on the north side of Center Street by the side entrance of the church. It's not the entrance to the church proper, the, the uh, ramp, and, but to the back, the, the smaller part of the church, going up to the administrative offices. We serve about 27, actually 27, community organizations during each week. Many of them have events going on, as does the church, which is becoming more and more busy. It is so convenient, it has been so convenient for us to have that space, not all the time, <coughs> part-time space to make deliveries in and out of the church, not to stay there and schmooze for the day. Um, so we are asking for the <coughs> restoration of that space, whether it be limited by the city for 15 minutes only. Um, if it could say church parking, well, that would be wonderful, but we understand you might want to say 
15 minute only for whomever, but it would be a great help for us. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. As you're aware, Iron Horse is right opposite the church, and I'm aware they pay for their parking spaces, but they take up a good number of parking spaces during the week. So um, if our people were to come along and want to park on that side of the street where there is public parking, there, there really are diminished opportunities. I'm talking now not about someone who just wants to go in and deliver a letter, but someone who is bringing things in and out of the church. So that's, that's the reason that parking space was there for many years. I've been a member of First Churches for about 20 years myself. And uh, okay. so, so that's the issue there. And have, do you also have on your docket the issue of the restoration of the crosswalk, which I understand from your parking administrator was a temporary crosswalk, but uh, we have very much appreciated it. Yeah, well, actually, I, I didn't add that to the agenda, unfortunately. Oh. May I speak to it, or is yes, this part you can. short? Please. Okay. We probably um, can't engage in much discussion about it. But. Okay. Um, in the same area, down a little bit on the north side of Center Street, as you approach the parking lot, the, the police station parking lot, not the one that's exclusively police with the, with the, the barrier, um, is the little building of 21 Center Street, and that's a long defunct restaurant. <clears throat> I understand from your parking administrator that the first space there, there are two parking spaces presently in front of 21 um, Center Street, and I understand that because there's been difficulty with access and egress to that police public parking lot, um, that there is a motion afoot to remove that first parking space for, for the safety of egress and access. We would like to ask, therefore, if that very dim old crosswalk that presently exists, going a little bit catty corner from 21 Center Street over toward the TD parking lot, if that be repainted and reinstituted, and this is why, on Sundays after church, and even before, we have a number of people who park in the parking lot for TD, the TD parking lot, coming across. And as you all know, churches are not the hottest item um, in terms of youthful gatherings these days. We have a lot of elderly members. <coughs> and going across before 10 o'clock in the morning, <coughs> excuse me, admittedly on a Sunday morning, is not really dangerous. But after church services, there's a coffee hour, sometimes there's an after program. Going across that street at 11 in the morning, noon time, as you all know, Northampton picks up. And there's some really frisky drivers coming around that corner from Main Street and zipping up from um, State. So, we would like to ask if you could just simply repaint that crosswalk and reinitiate it at the same time that DPW or whatever agency is in, is in charge of this um, removes the first parking lot in front, the first parking space in front of 21 Center, then it would be a great benefit to our elderly members to safely cross the street. Uh, I've been with them on numerous occasions when I've had to play traffic cop, and I don't have much experience in that. So those those are the issues, and I thank, thank you for you. your time. If no, you have questions, you. I'm happy to answer. Um, just to clarify, I actually clarified this with um, Pastor Weir, but I don't know if he... he right, Todd wanted here. to be here. We both right. thought that um, uh, the meeting was at 7. I don't oh. know why you thought that. But anyway, so I just got down from New Hampshire, changed my clothes, and I apologize for being late. So that's why I'm here. No, no, no. Um, um, what, I, what I told him is actually the, the parking space that's being removed is not in front of it's not in front of that building. It's on the other side of the driveway into the police station. So oh. so I, I see what you're saying about the crosswalk. Oh. And actually, like I have a picture right here of the crosswalk from 2011. And it goes right into where there's now a spot, but that's not what's being Oh, removed. that's so why this, okay. Right. All right. Um, well, so that doesn't help that issue because that would bring the crosswalk right into the parking spot. Well, how about 
a new crosswalk then, <laughs> right across from that, you know, some, where it's fairly level from the 21, just above the 21 Center Street, actually just opposite our little lawn there, crossing over Center Street in the direction of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the Iron Horse, but not that far off. I can't think right now what's there. Um, it used to be a music place. Yeah, right. Now it's a pub, a pub right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Talking about the green room? Pardon me? Green room. The green room. Green room, right, right. The big sign, don't come in after 1 a.m. Yeah. So, okay. so if I might adjust that request. And thank you for explaining that. No, thank you. And can I ask a question? Oh, I sure. probably can't get into the crosswalk that much, but as far as the parking, the, the 15 minute space, let's just call it. Yeah. You're looking for that to be right in front of. Uh, it's where the there's door. a no parking sign now. So there's no parking allowed in the. In the That's store. correct. Okay. And where there is that no parking sign, there used to be a sign, and I can't recall the exact wording, but it Got said, it. I think it said church parking, or temporary church parking. Right, there, okay. and so, I guess we, that's what we were gonna discuss, whether, since there, there are two spaces there right now, the question is whether a third one can be fit back in there. Um, there's a fire hydrant, but I guess the question is measuring it whether, to see whether it's possible to, Get it. Yeah, that's the concern. Is yeah. that we went out and looked, and you can see the fire hydrant in this picture on whether or not we could put a space in there far enough away from the existing fire hydrant. So is the fire hydrant between the land, the second car, and where we're requesting a spot? It's near the wall of first. So, so the path to get to the office. Right. It's to, if you're facing the that path, it's right. to the right of, of it. Oh. Oh, I do. Th well, it'll be up to you, but I think there is room. I, yeah. Yeah. It's what's what's the what's the um, the distance that you have to have before a parking space before a meet um, a plug? Um, <coughs> I, I went out there and you know it's not exact, but it's approximately 25 feet from the existing parking space to the fire hydrant. You're talking about a 12 foot long um, parking spot. Longer than that. Typically 18, 20 feet. 18, yeah. 20 foot is typical. Well, anyways, it, it's, you know, that's that's your distance that, that you're talking. It seems to me about 25 feet. So you have to be 10 feet from the fire hydrant. Okay. I mean, I'm looking out the, the window here. Are they 20 feet? Those are typical parking. Spaces. We're talking parallel parking spaces, yes, sir. not not head in parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Yes. Parallel well, parking spaces are 20 feet long, and 18 is tight for a, a large vehicle. It's a parallel parking space. There is a hydrant there, so we have to parallel parking. Well, right I think that, that we need some sort of proposal here. Yeah. There's an awful lot of discussion about things that are difficult to visualize. So if there's some specific proposal sure. that you might be able to bring forward to us, I think that would clarify exactly what it is that okay. you're, that you're so seeing. So come back with photos that, and distance. To me, that would be more productive rather okay. than trying to uh, work on a phone and uh, look at a picture and try to understand your description. Thanks. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Well, I, I would just like to ask that we find out the rules for the distance in the park to the fire hydrant. And if it's possible to fit a space in there, and that may just bang, answer the question. And, and that may indeed be why the space was eliminated, I'm guessing. Um, can I ask for, Please? Can, could we go back and find out what, uh, my belief was it was eliminated around when the, when the new station was built because the construction and building, you know, that whole area changed. Um, so what I don't know is, and what I can't remember and I can't find a picture of, because they don't go past 2011 on, Google Maps is whether there had been three spaces there or whether there were two and um, one was uh, there were two but they were kind of moved closer to the church because um, if there had been three that might well there there were two to my recollection there were two actual spaces you know mostly in front of 21 Center and then the other one was the was the church right so it might be that there was not really yeah. three. should they be described in ordinance Exactly where they are. <laughs> yeah. 
where the existing look at the ordinance and see what the ordinance says for where the spaces are supposed to be and <clears throat> see if there were any changes around the time that the police station was built and maybe find a little history uh, <clears throat> Plus, planning might have the GIS historicals. Well, we have historical orthos that become, I mean, prior to 2011, they should still be fairly clear and readable, but they do start to get much less readable as you go back. I would also just note that there's a 15 minute space not far down <clears throat> near the police station. I thought that was being removed. Oh, it's just being shipped. It's being shipped to them, so that will be retained. I know it's not right in front of the church, but. Certainly available to. So it's by the police station? Yeah, right near the entrance to the driveway to the police station. Oh, I, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, okay. that's available as well. But okay. Perhaps the Ward 4 counselor can kind of find out where the spaces are. Okay. If you want to. From the, you mean out. from the path? Okay. okay. Well, we'll, we'll do you. our homework. And um, are there any, should we make a date to come back? your next meeting or is this now in your why don't we why don't we be in touch do we have okay. your contact information um simply call um i believe you have okay. todd weir's uh, we'll be in contact touch with information you. yeah we're, okay okay we well, appreciate your time thank you okay well thank you okay um Nothing else in this item. So item G, uh, discussion of traffic calming for Riverside Drive relative to traffic calming after question uh, number one for the Bay State Association Riverside Drive. And I just wanted some clarity on this. I'll tell you, I met with the, um, the Bay State Neighborhood Association, uh, just to provide information to you. Um, and you, I think a group of people who are very interested in seeing something uh, done there at some point. And I just wanted to follow up on our last conversation to really understand what we, what we had in mind um, for Riverside. I know there's discussion of a, of a temporary speed bump. I know there's been temporary speed bumps in the past. I just wanted to ask what the, what the thought was at this point for, for that. Well, there has been two temporary speed homes that were placed a few years ago, and it did show that there was a decrease in speed. But I think it was due to lack of funding that they didn't install a permanent speed home. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure who would like to put in temporary homes again. Also, a question about actual location in terms of the, which residences were going to be most impacted by the location. And that always seems to be the question. Um, that in general, the neighborhood is in favor of adding this, but it then becomes a question of impact on an individual. Perhaps and how they, whether or not they agree with that. I don't, Okay, there was some discussion yeah. about uh, <clears throat> the, the common good versus the individual situation, and I'm not quite sure how that the commission felt about moving forward from that part. And can I ask, are there any um, <clears throat> painting contracts in theory? Yeah. Are there any painting contracts in theory? Because I remember um, painting was, was to yeah. explore for that road too. Maybe, I don't know, bike lanes necessarily, but something to narrow the road. I don't know if that would be something you'd be willing to explore. It's maybe yeah. an easier thing to do for Riverside, for traffic. We do have uh, an outstanding uh, line painting contract that we've been adding lots of streets to. Uh, we don't know when we're going to get them <coughs> that information and get them mobilized, but okay. we could certainly look at putting 11-foot uh, travel lanes Riverside with the uh, yellow center line and the, the white edge line. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'm still with the Riverside. Is there a lot of information there? 24? 23. 23. Okay. So uh, there's certainly not room for bike lanes. <laughs> okay. Are you very skinny bikes? No. Okay. We're very good riders. <laughs> stay on a very skinny path. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's kind of what I want to know, and I'll, I can follow up with the residents about the specific placement issues and the other things that you've just mentioned. So, thank you. Is there anything else on this? Um, I don't see anything, anyone from the PBTA here today. This was item H, expanding the bus stop in front of the Academy of Music and removing parking spaces, and it came to our commission 
two months ago. Uh, they were supposed to come back, but I don't see them. So, unless there's any further discussion or anything we've heard from the PBTA about this. Okay, well then, unless there's any objection, we'll move on from that one. Uh, item I, I put this on the agenda at the request of a, a business owner in downtown Florence, uh, just about expanding parking in general. Um, I don't know how much we can discuss it. I wasn't sure whether anyone was going to come to discuss this at the meeting or not. But um, you know, I know that there are two parking spaces being put in front of the bank uh, on the main drag there. And, um, so I don't know. I put this on the agenda just to, you know, because I know people there wanted to discuss it. But maybe not just, today. Well, perhaps not. So, um, but is there any? In, I know we've talked about this in the past. Any, any thoughts or discussion items on this? So if not, we can, we can postpone it to the future. Well, I think it's an ongoing problem too with the medical building there and the, yeah. some yeah. of the new businesses, and that's what we hear is the most helpful thing would be having employees not park in their own spaces, thereby pushing out patients and customers you know, out onto the main street. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where that burden should lie. If it should be with us to add new spaces or for them to come up with an mm -hmm. alternative mm -hmm. plan for the employees. I think that's what we've heard from listening to people in the past, uh, that patients are parking on the street. I'm not sure how we would <coughs> ask them to do that. Yeah, the streets are public. I think you're, that's a good point. It is kind of, um, excuse me, <coughs> funny, I don't know, for myself, I don't think I've ever had a hard time finding a parking spot in Florence. <laughs> and so if I were a patient going to that medical building, maybe I'd have to walk a block. But um, is it really a parking problem in Florence? Yeah, well, I live in that area, and I, I'm down there a lot, too. And I understand that there certainly can be times when it's busy, but not doesn't feel as if it's overwhelmed. Now, I know that people go and park on the residential streets, and then the people that live on those residential streets that are immediately surrounding them feel as if they can't have anybody come to their house because all the street parking is is used up. And I think that may be where the issue lies more than coming and going straight forward to stores in downtown Florence. I think some of the concerns about patients were people with mobility issues or in the winter, um, if it's icy, it, it, it hard for patients to have to travel across the street to get to their doctor's appointment um, when an able-bodied employee could park a little bit farther away and walk to work. Any other comments on this? Yeah, I think it is. It is what it is and probably we'll hear this again going forward. So, thank you. Um, item K, I would like to move to continue this item or just take it up at a future meeting. Uh, unless there's any objection to doing that. Um, it, it might be something to work out um, with um, the DPW rather than just in this commission. Any objection to doing that? Okay. Well, thank you. Any new business today?